Hey guys, so I decided to make this short little video just to answer some of the recurring questions I've been getting on some of my videos. Also to talk a bit about my plans for my channel and the projects going forward. Most importantly, I want to have a chat about my vision for my new workshop layout. Now, if you guys follow my channel, you would probably remember that I recently posted a video or a number of videos showing me taking apart some of my favorite projects and even my workbench. The reason for this, I was preparing for my new workshop layout that would be done according to my vision for an extremely functional small workshop. Before I jump in, however, I want to take a moment to thank everybody for their positive feedback on my previous tool storage video. This will hopefully be the first of many projects that will follow my basic guideline in an effort to achieve this super functional small workshop. And for all of you that asked for plans via the comment section of that video or the emails you guys have been sending me, those plans are now live on my plans website, so I will link it down below. Check it out if you want to support my channel, and if you haven't seen the video, I will link that as well. Okay, so first up, a question that is coming up more and more these days, why am I not using my restored AGS-10? I mean, it's a fantastic machine and a massive upgrade from my small contractor type saw I'm currently using. Now the answer to that question is actually quite simple. The country is being subjected to pretty much permanent rolling blackouts. I am very fortunate to have a backup system to pick up the slack when the power is off. Now unfortunately even when the power is on, the power supply to this workshop is coming in via that backup system. And the system isn't beefy enough to start the 2.2 kilowatt motor on the Watkin. So that left me with a pretty difficult decision to make. Do I get rid of the AGS-10 that I poured hours of work in, and to be honest, I'm quite proud of it as well, or do I find a way to compensate and be able to run the AGS-10, at least when the power is on? And I decided to do that instead. As soon as I get around to it, I'm going to install a separate circuit to my workshop from the main incomer to run the Watkin and other high power machines, at least when the power is on. And I need to do this sooner rather than later because the Watkin forms part of my new workbench that I'm going to start building as soon as I find the time. It also takes up unnecessary space when it's not being used. Now I'm not going to be getting rid of my little contractor type saw just yet. It's a good backup to have for when the power is off, but it doesn't make sense to have two saws in a small workshop. So I'm going to look at a mechanism that will allow me to fold the saw into a working position without feed support when I want to use it. But when I want to pack it away, I will fold it into a stored position and push it up against a wall where it would take minimum space. Then, on that note, my new all-in-one woodworking workbench. This is an idea or a project that I've wanted to do for probably two years, or at least the first time I mentioned it was about two years ago. So why haven't I gotten around to it? Well, there's actually a couple of reasons why. Unlike my first bench, which was a bit more of a prototype, I want my new bench to be a long-term solution, which requires thorough planning, considering there is going to be one or two moving parts. I also needed to iron out some of the kinks in the design because I wanted this bench to be super functional. The final reason for the delay is tools. I've been considering upgrading some of my machines, but because I designed my bench around my machines, I can't finalize the design until I've decided which machines I want to get. One of the machines I'm looking at replacing and having a little bit of trouble deciding is replacing my Mitosaw, my KGS 254M Metabu to be replaced with a Bosch GCM12. Now it feels a little weird saying this because I always have and still do believe that the Metabu KGS 254M is the best value hobbyist Mitosaw out there and in the years I've had mine it has served me very well. But I'm considering the Bosch for its space saving capability due to its zero wall clearance feature, which will allow me to place a mitre bench up against the wall. I am however still a little bit on the fence with this decision considering it is a considerable jump in price, but maybe you guys can help me make up my mind. Any of you that own the saw or have experience with it, please let me know, give me your input in the comment section down below. Right, so next up is my vision for my small workshop and how through careful planning I hope to optimize organization and workflow. The one thing I can't afford to waste is space. So this is my number one consideration when designing any of my projects. You should have noticed this theme with my previous video where I maximized the storage capability within the space available and while keeping easy access to the items that are stored. Besides space saving my future projects or when designing my future projects, I will also focus on maximum efficiency, easy usability, and where possible, multifunctionality. I will consider these objectives when designing all of my future projects and all of my storage units from now on will either be wall or roof mounted. 
I don't want anything fixed to the wall below this point or standing on the floor. Below this point, everything needs to be mobile. Benches and trolleys, everything on wheels and small enough to move with relative ease. Things like my lumber storage is going overhead and I'm even looking at mechanisms that would allow me to store and use my compressor overhead, but with easy access for when I want to remove it. No more power cords or air lines on the floor. Everything is going up, but not fixed permanently because I still want a degree of adaptability or versatility. I want this workshop to be dynamic. I want it to be able to change depending on whatever project I'm working on. How do I hope to achieve this? Well, through careful planning and clever design. I believe that to truly maximize my small workshop, I need to design it in a way that would allow it to change. An example of this vision is the idea for my new all-in-one workbench, which will consist out of three separate benches that can be configured to complement each other. If I set all the benches in a long line, I can have support for long stock when sawing with the miter saw, a rectangular configuration for outfeed support on the table saw, individual benches for high mobility or when working on bulkier projects, I can move the benches up against the wall. It might be a little bit tricky to envision right now, but I'm hoping in the coming months as my projects become reality, I'll be inching towards building the ultimate small single garage workshop. But what do you guys think? Do you think a dynamic workshop is achievable? Or do you think that I'm going to end up with a bunch of over-engineered projects and not really increase the efficiency of my workshop? And that's pretty much what I wanted to say today. Thank you so much for listening. Before I go, I want to get your input. So if there's anything you want to add, drop it down below. Anything that I can do to make this channel better, something I need to work on, maybe the recording or the audio quality, my editing style, anything, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am working on a few builds and I'm going to start posting them really soon. So stick around. If you aren't subscribed yet, you should do that now. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Cheers.